I, the first that I remember was when we lived down in Black Pine, Idaho, and it was out west of Malaya, about 50 miles. And the families went out to the do dry farming, but they didn't stay very long because it wasn't not enough rain. So they turned it back to a reserve. But we lived there about five years. And transportation was a wagon and a team of horses. No plumbing or electricity. We lived in the summertime on a farm with a windmill. And we, there was ten children, so we always had somebody to play with if there wasn't anybody close, and we still liked to play with each other. Uh, we had a one-room schoolhouse and had a row of desks for each grade. I was the only first grader, and I read all my books to my teacher. He was. Chauncey Abbott was his name, and so he put me up with the second grade, and my sister was in the second grade, so we were in the same grade till we graduated from high school. I, I guess we were poor, but we didn't know it. We always had what we needed, and that was good people around us, good parents, and, and we, we had a great childhood. It really has affected me all my life to, to have been there. I was four years old. I was about six years old. I was going to school. When my little brother got in that can of lye and ate it, and he, he actually uh, died. His vital organs just stopped, and the nurse that was there, the doctor wasn't in town, but the nurse said, he, he's gone, he's dead. And my mom, run to the phone. My dad was staying with us out in Black Pine and she was in Tree Mountain, but she ran to the phone and called her cousin that lived in town. And then he went to uh, uh, his friend's place, another elder to come to give Johnny a blessing. So that was quite a while after John died. And he came in and they came in and, and administered to him, gave him a blessing and he lived. And, that was, that was something for us to always remember. And, and that's the way we lived out in Wright Pine. I didn't go to a doctor until I was married. And well, Glenn, my brother, had a, a tick. We had a lot of sagebrush to play in and so on. And the sheep would go through there. And so once in a while we got wood ticks. And, uh, he got Rocky Mountain spotted fever, and he was very sick with a fever, and he didn't get better uh, <clears throat> after several days. And so, Father just had a all kneel around his bed, and every one of us said a prayer for for Glenn, and then then he uh, administered to him and gave him a blessing and. Glenn was kind of in a coma, but he just said, I opened his eyes and said, I'm hungry. And he got better. He was really, really sick. And that's, that's the way we did when there was someone that was sick. My first job was during, after we moved back to near Pocatello, to Income, Idaho. And I graduated from high school when I was 16, and then you had to have a Social Security card to get a job, and I couldn't get one because I I wasn't old enough at the time, but when I did get one, I went into Pocatello and worked in a laundry for a while, and then I worked in a, a dairy distribution place where we made cottage cheese, packed cottage cheese and things like that. And I worked, I worked for a lady as a nanny for a while. That was after I graduated from high school. From Black Pine, we moved up to Newdale, up to this house where we live now. No, I mean this location, the house was across the way. But they were neighbors to us here, the John Swinman family. 
his wife had died and he had three children, Ardell, Milda, and Mark. And Mark was a sophomore in high school and I was in the third grade in grade school, so he didn't even notice me. But uh, we moved away down to Ingram, Idaho, but because my father was a counselor in the bishopric with Mark's father, they kept track of us and wrote us letters and stopped to visit as they went from New Deal down there. And they wrote, Mark would write the letters to us and nobody answered them, so I decided I would. And so after Mark was out of uh, high school, uh, <clears throat> he went on a mission and he, he just continued to write to me. We wrote together during his mission, and then when he went to the military, to the Army, and all of while he was in the Army, we wrote. And then when he came home, he'd come to see us. And so we got better acquainted and got married. That summer, we only dated for three months. That wasn't very long. And when he came home from the Army, it, and we dated that summer and was married in September. We was married in the Salt Lake Temple and we decided to go on our honeymoon down to Bryce Canyon and Zion's and that funny little car we had. Uh, we got to Provo and our brother-in-law, Ren Smith, said, I'm going to be up t taking kids uh, to Rick's College. You just go in and you can use our home. So we went in there and had some dinner and then went to bed. And here he came at midnight with a lot of college kids. And they slept all over his bedrooms and floor. And then he came and got in bed with us. <laughs> and he slept with us all night. I was glad I was against the ball. <laughs> um, and he did it just to be, just because he wanted to. <laughs> we had a special thing to go to one evening, and Mark didn't come in and get ready when he should. And uh, after a while, I went out to look for him, and he was on the top of one of the granaries, and the ladder that he got climbed up on to get up there had slid off to the ground. So he just had to sit there till somebody rescued him. <laughs> he says, well, <clears throat> I tried to get attention to the cars on the highway, but that's a quarter of a mile away. <laughs> uh, we were harvesting barley and I was unloading the trucks. And I needed to come in the house, which was a little ways to make a phone call. While I was gone, Mark, for some reason, leaned over the auger that was taking the grain up into the elevator, and his overalls caught on that auger going around, and it ripped all of his clothes off. All he had on was his boots, his shoes, and I went out, when I went out there, there he was standing stark naked and I couldn't figure out what in the world was happening. <laughs> I was just grateful that he was alive because he sh it sure could have killed him. But then we could laugh after, after a while. <laughs> we did try to raise chickens in a little coop and it wasn't too successful. We tried to get them grown up and fattened and then, then we, to prepare them to freeze was you had to scald, and after they, you, you killed them, and then you had to put them in hot scalding water and get the feathers off and clean them up and dress them out and everything. It was, we decided this one year was enough of that. <laughs> it wasn't very good. Mark had horses for a little while to farm with, and then his dad had a big monster tractor that he left here, and we couldn't get parts for it, it was too old. 
So that was about the time we quit having animals. All we, all we had the cows, we had a dairy for 30 years. And it was what, about the 1960s that the barn burned down so we didn't have a dairy. We've been to all of the 48 states and Hawaii and Alaska and the Caribbean places and Central America, Australia, New Zealand, and China, and Hong Kong, and, and some of the Pacific Islands, and, and I think we've been over to Israel and, and most of the European countries, and maybe about, I imagine, 15 countries. The most beautiful, I thought, was Switzerland. It's just all high mountains, alps, and lakes, and very, very little level ground. It, it is the most beautiful, I thought. And New Zealand's really pretty, too. It looks like a golf course from the air. But I like it here better. <laughs> I have learned the older I am, the more I know that it's so important to live the laws of Christ, to live the Ten Commandments, to live the gospel. <clears throat> and that's, that's the only real source of happiness in this world. You can try lots of other things, but that's Joseph Smith was a prophet, and, and our Heavenly Father lives and governs our affairs, and the Savior Jesus Christ lives and works with him. It, it's all very true. And if you want to be happy, just obey the laws of the gospel. I think that's wonderful that our family, uh, I think we all love each other very much, and I think that is so important, not to have feelings towards each other. It's hard to live wonderful all the time, but, it, but we should strive to always love each other and protect each other and be there for them. Well, it's, it's been a great life. I think the, the most memorable, one of the most memorable experiences I've ever had is when Mark took me to to Israel, and uh, that was great to be over there and stay the life of the Savior. And then, and we have gone to lots of places in the world, and I'm so grateful that we did because he liked to go, and I did too. And and uh, then when he he died, I I thought I knew how it would be and how to handle it, but I sure didn't know anything about it. And and it was such a memorable experience to just see his spirit soar and left. He he was looking up up to the corner of the room like that, his eyes wide open and breathing heavy and for quite a while and then Brent a couple of the son-in-laws gave him a blessing and asked that the Heavenly Father could take him because he was so sick. And in just a few minutes, he quit breathing. And you could almost see his spirit leave just like that. It just left. And there was nothing left, nothing living left. So I asked before he died if he could get permission to please just ride with me when I drove in the car. <laughs> and I think he does sometimes, but it's, I sure do miss him. And he was the love of my life, and I, I sure miss him very much. But I'm going to see him again. <laughs>